may be one of the reasons so many people in the church aren't making disciples of all nations is because they're not really disciples in the first place. You think about Jesus and his disciples from the very beginning to the very end. Making disciples is in the DNA of this thing, right? To be a disciple involves making disciples. Follow me, Matthew 4, and I will, what? I'll make you fishers of men. Never make a gospel appeal to people's emotions. Never. Never. That's why we don't have some kind of an emotional appeal here and play all kinds of small team music in the background. And it amazes me that we believe this, that God would crush and kill His own Son, but let you slide. Not for a minute. At this moment, God commands all men to repent and believe that today is the day of salvation, that you are to flee from the wrath to come, to flee from the law of Moses that condemns you into the city of refuge who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Run to Him. And welcome to G220 Radio. I'm your host, Ricky Gantz, and I want to thank you for joining me tonight. And on tonight's episode of G220 Radio, uh, we're going to be dealing with the topic of social media and pornography. And uh, we're going to be doing that with my guest who is going to be on the show with me tonight in this first hour, uh, Mitchell LeBron of Striving for Eternity Ministries. So I'm really looking forward to that tonight. Uh, really looking forward to what we have there. In the second hour, we've got some things that uh, we're going to go over as well. We're going to have our open air preacher spotlight. We're going to deal with, uh, we're going to share with you a couple open air preachers, Don Carnes and uh, Sean Holes. And uh, so I have a couple of audios of them preaching that uh, I wanted to share a couple weeks back, but um, kind of got into some other things in the shows and didn't get around to it. So. We're going to do that tonight, and then also uh, our Sermon Jam, we're going to deal with the Paul Washer story. It's uh, something I was going to play on the show we did about Sermon Jams and uh, Biblical Ministries, and so I'm going to do that for you tonight as well. And then we have some other things to get into in the next in the second hour as well as those, and so really looking forward to that tonight. But I want to jump right into it, what we have for this first hour. As I said, I'm I'm thankful and honored to have uh, on the show with me tonight my brother and friend Mitchell LeBron. He is of Striving for the uh, for Eternity Ministries, and uh, we are I am thrilled to have him with me uh, tonight. So, uh, Mitchell, welcome to G220 Radio, my friend. Thank you, brother. It's good to be back. It is good to me? have you. Back on the show. Yes, I hear you. I hear you good. Last time you was on the show, when you first came on, you you said you were standing on a tub with one leg up in the air trying to get service. Um, yeah, now, yeah, I know I'm you're in a, a new I'm location. So. Now, so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good to, but, good to hear. We're trying out a new um, microphone. So. Okay. So hopefully everything will be... Um, good on your end then with the new microphone. I know how that can be. Uh, I've gone through a few different ones to try it out and see how uh, how they worked out. So hopefully the finished product and, and everybody will be able to hear fine and we could have a good discussion on this topic that we're going to get into. Well, first I want to ask you, man, how are you doing? How's how's the family? How's the new move? How's everything going for you uh, in Not your bad. area? Yeah, not not bad, you know. We moved from, you know, what you can proverbially call the hood, you know, to to civilization. So, you know, going from gunshots to silent winds going through trees is the best way we can describe it. You know, we just recently got settled here, and, you know, it's it's calm. I really thank God for um, for for this new place that we have. Yeah, well, praise the Lord. I know you wanted to move for a while, and, and that's a true answer to your prayers to uh, get you into a new location. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, it's, it's another really... thing. I... Go ahead. Oh no, no, I was just saying it was a, it's a relief. Okay. 
Yeah, it definitely. I'm sure it is. I know that uh, we're probably going to have a little delay, um, so I apologize if I start to talk over. Um, I wanted to ask you, too, about the Super Bowl outreach. I know you just came back from that. Maybe if you want to fill us in a little bit of how that went. Yeah, it was, it, it was amazing. You know, Bill Adams does a great job of setting it up. You know, there's great teaching, wonderful fellowship, and, you know, just watching the word go out on the streets like that. You know, last year was my first year here in New York City. You know, we had about 80, 80 brothers and sisters. And this year we had about 100 and just seeing the massive, a massive turnout, you know, 10 teams of 10 people just scattered. No matter what corner you went to, you saw the gospel preach. It was it was it was amazing. I got a lot of tips, you know, from a lot of brothers, uh, Andrew Rapport and a couple of the people on our team on how to how to better myself and better my own preaching. So it was it was it was really really encouraging and really edifying. Yeah, I know those uh those outreaches that um Bill Adams puts together. Um I've never been to the Super Bowl one, which I know is one of the biggest, if not the biggest event that he does host and put on. Uh, But I know going to those events, it can really be um, a great – it's a great opportunity to to proclaim the gospel with other brothers and sisters, but like you said, it's that that opportunity to learn from them as well, you know, because there's people that have been doing it longer. There's people that, even if they haven't been doing it longer, may have picked up other tips, so we constantly keep learning from each other while we're out there, Mm -hmm. and um, it's a great opportunity. Amen. Amen. Yeah, last year was the first year I actually met Robert Gray and Mike Stockwell. You know, that's that's when I first met those guys. So it's 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 really great and I met a lot of others, you know, this time around, you know, Bob McCreary and Ed Lee and, you know, all all their teams, you know, it was great. Mhm. Yeah. Oh and uh, yeah, wonderful Rapport. Right. Speaking of Andrew Rappaport, uh the Ohio Fire's coming up and uh Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that. It's coming up uh, in April. Is it April? Yeah, yep. April. Yep. Uh, we're doing something a little different this year. You know, normally it was just the Friday and the Saturday. You know, the Friday and into the Saturday, rather, I should say. Um, we're actually doing it an extra day this year. We're doing it Thursday. Um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, it's actually, um, it's, um, it's going to be uh, seasoned evangelism training with uh, Mike Stockwell and Robert Gray. They'll be there training. Mm-hmm. Um, it, um, again, it's through the night to the 11th. So the conference doesn't start until 10th, but you can always sign up. Uh, I believe it's $20 to sign up for the training with Robert and uh, Mike. They would train us throughout the day, and they go out at night and evangelize with them and put it into practice. Yeah, praise the Lord. I, I know I'm I'm really looking forward to being at the Ohio Fire this year. I, I'm not going to make it down for that Thursday night, but uh, – uh, I'm definitely looking forward to coming down there, and I have some friends, uh, brothers and sisters up in this area that are going to be going down together. So really looking forward to it. I was blessed by it last year. Again, looking forward to this year's um, Ohio Fire. Uh, unfortunately, though, you're not going to be there, though, because I'm coming, right? I mean, that's what no, you said on No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm not <laughs> going because An- Andrew's going to be there. Oh, okay, because of Ant. All right, I got it. Yeah, yeah. As but yeah, I thought but, it was because but, of me. No, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um <laughs> but um yeah, no, no. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. We're gonna have the guys from Calm Down, we're gonna have Ken Cook and, and Matt Slick, you know, so it's 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 really gonna be um a really great time. You know, but it's gonna be the thirty Thursday night I will reach Friday afternoon training with Mike and Robert, excuse me. So we're actually gonna be going out on Thursday with them. And they'll be training us on Friday afternoon. Uh, well, well, praise the Lord, brother. I really am looking forward to uh, getting there and um, seeing all the brothers and and just enjoying the conference and hearing the, the great speaking or preaching messages that are going to be there for us that weekend. Um, it's definitely something to get involved with if you're able to. If you you are are in the area of the Ohio Fire or you can travel to it, check it out. Um, you know, there's also one in New Jersey and there's one in California. So, uh, you can check those out. Go to striving for eternity ministries dot org, I believe it's an org, right? And uh, yep, you can yep. check it out there. 
Yep, you could also go to spreadingthefire.org for the events, and uh, for Ohio, ohiofire.org. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord, brother. Um, we got a lot to really talk about tonight when we, we're dealing with this topic of social media. And then um, a little later in the hour, we'll get into you know dealing with pornography. Um, so if there's any... Uh, listeners who you know maybe have children in the in the room that wouldn't want them to hear that will I'll try to remember to let you know before we get into that topic uh, later on um, you know just in case you may want your younger ones not to listen to that but uh, dealing with social media this can be a I mean it, it can be such a great tool but at the same time it can be uh, a destructive tool and so that's one of the things what I want to kind of talk about tonight and discuss, you know, is, is social media. And um, so it's, it's a lot to, you know, uh, to talk about because there's the good, the bad, and the ugly that comes with it. But uh, I'm glad to have you with me and we can discuss this and, and hopefully this will be helpful to uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, in Amen. our, in our spiritual growth. So, <clears throat> so, Let's get into it, man. Let's let's talk about the the good of social media. What what are the good things that um, we've experienced? I know some good things that I've experienced from it, but what are some of the good things that you've experienced from the use of social media? Well, that's the thing. It actually does have a lot of uses, you know, especially in regards to ministry. You know, you get your ministry out to the entire world. It's pretty much just a, just a click and button or click on the mouse, I should say. You know, so it it does have its uses. You know, I've met so many brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, I've 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 gotten I've made so, so many lasting relationships, you know, with, with you, with you know, other people in Ohio, Joe Conkle, Carl Kirby Junior. You know, me and Andrew we met on the street, but you know, we, we start discussing things through Facebook. You know, and it's just great. It puts it pretty much puts the entire world, the entire Christian community in your living room. So it's like, you want to hear what Paul Walsh says? Go to YouTube. Check out somebody's Facebook. You know, there's so many edifying things about it, and it could be a great tool for edification. Yeah, and I'm in agreement with you, brother. I mean, that's, I mean, I've met so many wonderful brothers in Christ and and uh, other believers that uh, have been edifying to me, people that I've met online, um, you know, through Facebook or uh, I'm not as much on Twitter, but through those social media sites and, uh, you know, just, just being able to network with them and getting to know other brothers and sisters and then, like you said, being encouraged by them, having them pray for you, having them share uh, wonderful, you know, messages or articles or things that have helped us I know it has helped me to learn different things because when it comes to learning things in, in the uh, from a biblical perspective, there's so many things that we're, we're going to always be continuing to grow throughout our, our life, throughout our sanctification process until we're you know with Christ, and then we're even still going to be learning new things when we're in heaven because it's going to take eternity to get to know God, you know. <laughs> so I mean, but we're going to be learning. We're learning all these things in our life. And the brothers and sisters share things that have really been edifying to me, things that I've, I never really thought about or things that I, I didn't really fully understand. And, um, you know, so it, it's been a great tool in that way. And then, like you said, another thing is the, the fact that we can go all the way around the world, you yeah. know, like in, in, in just seconds, minutes, I mean, we're, we're there, and we can reach people with, you know, Small little radio shows like this may, you know, could travel, you know, through the yeah. internet. And um, <clears throat> the ministries like Striving for Eternity Ministries, you know, can travel over into other countries. And so that's that's a huge blessing, a huge blessing, uh, with with what social media has done uh, in that area. Yeah, you know, and um, I when when I was saved, I was actually saved um, in a Pentecostal church. But if it wasn't for meeting Andrew on the street and then finding all these preachers like MacArthur and Washer and Bauckham, you know, I, I, I would have never known what the doctrines of grace are. You know, God allowed me 
to have that avenue because I was internet savvy and I was always playing the online video games that I just knew my way around the internet. So I found all these people and it just opened up a world of doctrine of pure, pure food that I would never have gotten my hands on. Right. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. And I mean, like I said, there's so much there that it can be used for so much good. Um, And so it can be a blessing, you know, but then on the flip side of things, we, we look at, you know, the bad aspects of it, the, uh, the things that sometimes get downright ugly, um, you know, on, on social media sites. So what are some of the things when you say, I don't know if we can transition from bad to ugly, maybe we can try because, you know, we'll try to go with some things that are, are not so great about it and then really get into some, maybe some things that are just downright, like I said, ugly uh, when it comes to brothers and sisters in Christ, even on social media. Yeah, I think I think it's actually pretty easy to go from bad to ugly. You know, there's there are um, dividing lines. You know, so I would say the bad is that everybody's everywhere, the same thing. But now mm. your 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 privacy is technically gone. You know, you post a couple of things, yeah. and now everybody's in your life. Great example. I have you now work with one of my coworkers, guy the the the, the I think the brother, you know set his engagement on Facebook before the family. His mother mm. got bashed by the rest of the family for that. You know, because, like, oh, why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you tell us? She didn't even know. Yeah. You know, so and I've seen that, too, even... It's, it's one of those things. Yeah, I was going to say, I've seen that, too, even with... Uh, um, unfortunately, um, deaths in the family, um, you know, where people had posted things before other family members even knew about it, um, you know, and that that's that's a hard way to find those kind of things out, you know, especially yeah. when you're dealing with, yeah. with uh, a death. Uh, you don't want to open yeah. up your Facebook or Twitter account and find out, you know, uh, through there that your uncle or whoever may it is that may have passed on. Um, yeah. You know, it's a hard way to sure. find out those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. It would, there's 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 those aspects of it. Then you also have, um, I don't know, maybe this would be getting into some of the ugly aspects of it, where you have uh, bullying going on, online bullying. We see that with, um, you know, uh, these young teenagers in school. I mean, not only are, are they bullied in school, but then they can get online and be harassed and be bullied. Um, yeah. And then you have... Like you said, people can steal identities. You know, people can uh, mm-hmm. still get all your personal information, uh, and and you just you, you lose some of that freedom. I mean, I was yeah. before when I was on um, Facebook. I have it on my phone, so it's like, it's right by my side all the time. You know, uh, and yeah. uh, and then and, and for a while there, I was doing those check ins. You know, like uh, you'd go to somewhere and you just check in, just you know. And then you get to the point where it's like everybody knows they can kind of trace my where I'm going and and really who cares where I'm at you know but I mean <laughs> it's um, true it's yeah right you know it, it's it's very true you know and I you know I've been involved in you know family feuds because um I I can share this it, it's it's okay my family cut me off when I when I was saved when I would save my family departed from me. So this is the division of my family between, I, you know, safe to say, sex. You know, you know, got some sisters over here, you got some sisters over there. I'm in the middle. They saw my pictures with my daughter, with with one set of aunts and uncles, and then the other one saw on Facebook and started a whole family fight. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 one of those things, and. You know, I think the teachers that have been posting, you know, those, the, the, they hold the placards. Let's see how many, how fast this, this can get around the internet to show my, um, show my students how dangerous it is. Because you think about it, you know, even with the quote unquote privacy laws for Facebook, nothing's really private on the internet. You know, you, 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 you search for your name in a Google image search and you'll find the majority of your Facebook photos. That's disturbing. Mm-hmm. You know, especially right. for a guy like me that has a common first name that's a last name and now a common last name that's first name. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's it's you got to be very careful um, with social media and. Uh, because, like we said, there's those good things, those good aspects of it, but then you have these bad ones where you really have to guard yourself and protect yourself from, uh, you know, these things that can happen to you through social media. Uh, getting into, you know, some of the ugly things that we experience on 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 social media sites, I know they escalate very quickly. Um, I just made a joke with you earlier on Facebook uh, because you had posted something, and. Uh, <laughs> Because it seems like there's certain topics within, you know, and these are these are supposedly brothers and sisters in Christ that tend to get heated over certain types of discussions, and then um, they can escalate and it can get ugly. It can get pretty ugly. Yeah. And I'm not yeah, saying I'm not guilty of it at times in the past. I'm I'm not saying that, but um, mm-hmm. you know, it's just that's why we wanted to have this talk tonight and just kind of uh, deal with some of these things. So yeah, let's Amen. get into some of those ugly things. Yeah, see, and I think the problem stems from, you know, what you said, the bullying aspect. You know, you go from the bully on the street corner or the bully in the schoolyard, now you got the bully over the Internet. The difference is the bully on the Internet is a scrawny little kid getting bullied in school. I'm just using that mm-hmm. as a broad term. What I mean by that is that now with the computer, you're not going face-to-face with somebody. You know, there are no emotions. Right. You, have to, you have this mask. You know, your avatar. Yeah, it's a picture of you, but reality is it's an avatar. So you could just hide behind that and call it a day. See, I think a lot of the problems that we have, especially in um, in the Christian community, well, it's, it's everywhere, but let's, let's, let's zero in for us. You know, we, we have these hot topic discussions, whether it be, you know, what's my stance on eschatology? What's my stance on uh, dispensationalism or covenant theology or theonomy? you know, which is a big one now, you know, and we're not sitting with each other in a room or a coffee shop or on the phone. You don't know the tone right. that I'm using. You don't know my emotion behind it. You're assuming based right. on what you expect me to say. You right. know, so a lot of times, oh, you're being sarcastic. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. You know, uh, nine times a ten, I've gotten to the habit of it recently, shutting the computer, calling the person, and talking about it. Because most of yeah. the time, there's, there's not a problem. You know, people freak out and go crazy, but we don't know because we're we're, we're, we're going between this, this veil between each other. And it sets us up. And, you know, what I posted earlier, it's a pride issue. You know, it's, 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 it's a pride issue because the, 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 the screen, the veil, gives us power. You know, power to say, right. I believe this. You know, this is my stance, and I'm right. Instead of having a discussion, maybe I'm not right. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing um, when you, you mentioned earlier, and then you kind of went a little more into detail on it with, with the no emotions. Uh, because I think what happens is when you're typing something out, it can be it can be read wrong. Like you said, you know, it can be taken, perceived the wrong way. And um, I know that's happened with me because uh, one of the things I, I try to do with, you know, I do it on my Facebook page, but it's it's more for I want to I wanna create discussion for people to, to think, not to argue, but to think. So I'll ask questions, you know, and, and I try to do it, you know, maybe once a day, have a, a question of the day or, you know, if I forget, maybe a couple days or so, whatever, just have a question of the day to kind of get some discussion going. And sometimes when I write the question out, I'm thinking clearly, like, how I want to say it. But then when people mm-hmm. start reading it and they start responding back and they're like, well, that you probably shouldn't have said it like that or said it like this, you start to think like, oh, yeah, but I was meaning – to to say it this way, but it just when I typed it, it came out, you know, in a different way of of being clear for other people to really understand where I was trying to go with that. And so there can yep. be those misconceptions, those misunderstandings that cause more, um, you know, oh, yeah. back and forth. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and the biggest problem is, is that, you know, not the biggest problem, but, you know, a big problem with that is that, you know, you, you say, you know, oh, I meant to say it this way, but it came out this way. But the whole thing is, when you're saying it in person, it's going to come out you. 
and your idea, and it comes forth because your emotion is behind it, because you yourself, Ricky Gantz, is standing behind what he's saying, and they understand because they know you. Whereas with this, it's right. like, okay, I'm going to read this, but I'm going to read this as if I'm saying it. So if, if my tone doesn't match your tone, the way you're speaking, it's going to be lost, no matter how many times you reword it. Yeah. You know, I used to be really yeah, bad at that a few you know, a few years ago, I used to get into a lot of arguments, you know, not understanding, you know, I was relatively, um, you know, one or two years in, you know, going to crazy arguments, all night arguments with atheists. And, you know, they're the best, they're the best, that they have the master. And that's what I see in, in um, the, the Christian community is that we're taking their arguments, um, their intimate argument style and bringing it into Christianity. Yeah, you know I'm gonna hit and you I, hard. I posted, I'm gonna bring the hammer right from the beginning. And I'm gonna break the conversation. Done. Right, and 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 what I what I've seen is and what ends up happening. I think in a lot of these conversations, the way they end is well, you don't understand my position, or you don't understand what I'm trying to mm-hmm. say, and that's yep. basically the breakdown. We're not understanding each other. And uh, I have a friend of mine who um, a mutual friend that you know, but he he saw me post something on Facebook and instead of ask or responding to the question he just called me up on the phone you know like you were saying earlier and just said hey I wanted mm-hmm. to kind of clarify you know what you was trying to go or where you was going with that and then we just had a, a good conversation talking to each other um yeah. it wasn't any disagreements or anything but it it just made uh, made me really think about you know the fact that it is better to if you if you see something that um uh somebody who uh I'm sorry, somebody's – if you see something that somebody – you don't understand what they're they're trying to say, then uh, it's better to, to pick it up and, and uh, uh, ask them, you know, calling them up on the phone. Yeah, it's true. It's completely true. And, you know, part of this ugly part that – you know, I believe the second part with this is, you know, and I'm going to get flack for this. I know I am. But when it comes to Christian liberties, you know, you have – the, the the crowd that is okay with drinking, okay with, you know, smoking and other stuff, you know, along the line. But then you have other people that, you know, aren't. And there's a, a war between liberties. Oh, it's a liberty I can post about it. You know, but what what, what what's forgotten is, you know, Romans 14 and 21. You know, it's good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. You know, if a brother is made weak or a right. brother is stumbling from a picture, you're in sin. You're leading yeah. him into sin. You know, and it's like, you know, they'll use, um, you know, straw man. Oh, well, what if their, their problem is gluttony and you're posting about food? It's a complete straw man. You know, everyone has to mm-hmm. eat. Not everybody has right. to drink. Not everybody has to have a, a cigar or watch some secular thing on TV or movies. Mm-hmm. You know, I got. Um, I, I was just going to say I have a caller calling in that um, wants to get on for a little bit, real quick, and uh, so I'm going to bring him on. A uh, mutual friend of ours that I was talking about earlier, uh, George Alvarado. Uh oh, he's going to correct the grammar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a grammar doing? Nazi. Welcome, welcome to G220, brother. I am not a grammar Nazi. Definitely you, not. <laughs> you really are, though. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I just wanted to say that what you guys are talking about, I mean, resonates. And I hope everybody listening really listens to what you guys are saying because there's so much you guys are pointing out, the good things about the social media, and then, of course, the, the debates that go on, people forgetting that there's another human being inside the screen. So, um when you were talking earlier about the good things, um, it really resonated with me because both of you I technically met on Facebook. Amen. And I only got to see you in Mitchell um, at Super Bowl Outreach just recently. But it, it's out of all the people that I continue to meet on Facebook, there are still very few that I'll be able to say that for some reason there's an attraction there where you, you just become friends all of a sudden. You have so much in common and you're able to just you know relate. And both of you, or the one of the, the, or sorry, two of the, maybe five or six individuals where I have strictly met on Facebook, 
and it just turns out to be a wonderful, godly relationship. So I wanted to say that to let you guys know and to let the hearers know it's possible to find people on Facebook and just develop a, a true friendship after talking to each other. And then, of course, the nasty grams that you guys are talking about. I mean, I'm not going to even talk about that because that happens all the time. Matter of fact, it happened earlier today when you were talking about the uh, scripture where the individual was talking about the the translations. And uh, oh, yeah, he, wasn't re- yeah. he wasn't really nasty, but it, it, your original post had nothing to do with where it was going. No, so I just thought that was all. really interesting. Not at all. It was just... Uh... A quick exegesis on Matthew twenty uh, eleven twenty eight, and it went from that, from that. How do you go from yokes and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, to a debate on the Roman Catholic translation of the Bible? I I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I think there. that goes to, yeah, I think that goes to sometimes there are people out there who are looking and picking to be a Facebook Pharisee. I put that song up this uh this sometime earlier today um from uh I can't even think of his name now. It's Kurt Allen, well Curtis Kennedy. And uh I, I put it up there today um uh, because it resonates really with what we are talking about. And and when I listened to that song a while back I was like, man, this is I was guilty of that, especially in the beginning of becoming a Christian and getting on Facebook, um, you know, because I was like wanting to correct people, not because I was trying to be a jerk about it, but I was just like, that's wrong. I want to correct you. But some people do want to correct out of what you mentioned earlier, the pride, um, or they just want to be out there and get into the debates and go back and forth and and have like 500-some comments on their Facebook posts. And so they can sit back and say, look how successful I am because I got this many uh, hits on on Facebook. And um, it comes to that pride, you know. And then, and then there's some people that just, you know, put up a status just to start controversy, to get attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was accused like of that last week, and I, I, I didn't do it intentionally. <laughs> I just, I, 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 and being honest here, I didn't do it intentionally. There was uh, that American Sniper movie that it came out, and um, yeah. and I didn't see the movie. I would really had no interest in going to see the movie, um, you know. But I did read the book, uh, and so. I was just, you know, just wanted to put that out there in the question, and that was one of those questions that I didn't really ask it the right way, but um, because I was kind (laughs) of doing something else illegal. I was driving and texting, which I shouldn't have been doing. You know, that's another bad thing with social media because it's right at your, right at your fingertips, (laughs) and so I kind of didn't really uh, get the question out the right way, and um, was accused basically of causing controversy, and it really wasn't my intention. I just really was wanting to hear people's feedback on, you know, that, that type of uh, um, situation. So, yeah. Here's a quick okay. thing, and i got to go because me and my wife are going to go somewhere. You know, normally if people, um, if people it, like this is the advice I usually give people on social media, if you care about the individual enough to where you want to have a meaningful discussion with them, chances are if you inbox them or call them, you're going to have a greater chance at a meaningful discussion because it's just like calling somebody out in a classroom or a teacher or a friend. There are some things that can be talked about, but the minute you start to see disagreement, save the conversation in a private setting so that you guys can freely disagree and maybe even get loud with each other if you have to, because some people do that. That's their personalities. But at the end of the day, you guys can understand, hey, I care about you. I don't necessarily want to just have this fight in front of everybody, so therefore I'm going to try to have this with you where nobody's looking because I care about you that much. And that's usually what I do. If if there's something public, I'll respond or whatever the case would be. But when it starts getting really complex and it starts to become where you're starting to misunderstand each other's posts, it's time to inbox or it's time to make a phone call. Amen. Amen, exactly. And and thanks, George, for uh, calling in and talking with us for for a little bit. Hope you enjoy your evening. Yeah, man. Thanks. I uh, love you guys. I just wanted to talk to you. I figured you guys were you guys when you when you started talking about uh, phone calls and, and social media and stuff like that. I was like, great. I love these guys. I can talk about it. <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. Yeah. You too. Bye. All right, man. Have a good one.
Yeah, and so when he was talking about that too, the the fact of calling somebody or inboxing them, it's something that I try to do when I'm on the streets, and it's not because I try to do it because I have to work at it. It's just because of that compassion you have for uh, other people while you're out there sharing the gospel with people. And when somebody comes up, I'm not interested in winning the, the argument, not at all. I, I can care less if you walk away thinking you won an argument over me you know i'm more concerned with that person's soul and so when I'm, I'm in those conversations i try to do that on facebook too because it like we said some of those times the the conversations can be misunderstood um but i, I i'm more concerned with having the conversation and and being uh loving with that brother or sister who, you know whatever the the topic may be that we're talking or discussing rather than winning an argument you know um to throw Amen. out straw man for everything that you come back with a question for or to throw out you don't understand my position and when you're trying to engage in the conversation um and then the uh what do you call it the the it gets it sometimes can get nasty rather than and and then the the uh, ad hominems can come where people start attacking each other rather than just continue you know really trying to understand uh yeah. you know what what's being said yeah yeah it's true and you know, see, with me, I'm, you know, I'll use eschatology as as an example because it's perfect for me because I don't have a position. People don't understand that. I don't fall into any of the four camps. I lean a certain way, but I don't know enough about any of them. But what I can say is that nobody really understands the opposite views, yet they're attacking as if they do. You know, only recently mm-hmm. have I learned the three, you know, the three tenets, the three mounts that this sensationalism stands on, and everybody attacks the shaman. I'm like, oh, wow, this is not good. You know, and it's the yeah. same thing with the post mill and the out mill as well. Yeah. Could you maybe explain for maybe our listeners who are listening and they say, what is he talking about, straw man? Uh, well, when people throw that out there. You, yeah, setting up a straw man is basically saying this topic, um, the, the belief structure, the presuppositions is D, when in reality it's A. So you attack D to knock it down. Ha, I won the argument, but the reality is you didn't because – you were discussing something else entirely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's it's just, you know, it's yeah, again, I think it comes to that. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, just to use an example, you know, dispensationalism. You know, there's three simple rules to dispensationalism that, no, that nobody really pays attention to, but they all attack, you know, oh, it's about time bubbles. If they don't believe in covenants, and it's like, you know, they go after that, but that's not true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's one of the topics. When when you deal with uh, eschatology, it's it seems like that's a, a heavy uh, button. You deal with, um, uh, you mentioned it, or theonomy, that's a heavy button, you know, yeah. and then the covenantal uh, debate thing is a heavy button. Uh, I know Andrew Rappaport um, called me one time to – could be after I did a show on uh, – we were doing the shows basically as an introduction, and I wanted to do each viewpoint of eschatology, dispensational, uh, premillennialism, historic premillennialism, and uh, postmillennialism and amillennialism. I wanted to do a show on each of those, and I've got two of them done. I'm still trying to get the other two done. I'm looking for the right um, – people to come on to talk about those positions but um and he called me after you know speaking about the dispensational thing and saying you know it's not only an end times you know view it, there there's more to it than that which is something that you know is in that mindset of people because we don't know the other person's position and we, we don't really um what really want to take the time to learn it or talk to them about it to understand where they're coming from with that position. We just want to argue and knock it down and put our position up there. That's why I wanted to do the show with each position and have somebody come on, not to argue with them about their position, but have them explain their position and put it side by side with the others, and then people can look at the scriptures and compare that way. Yeah, man.
sorry for the silence there. I had to uh, get a quick <laughs> drink um, and <laughs> had to clear my throat, so I had to take it off of, of the uh, thing. Uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back and um, talk about pornography. If you want to grow in your understanding of God's Word and learn to study the Bible for yourself, join Pastor Andrew Rappaport as he teaches each week from the Word of God. The teaching is free through the Internet, but paid students receive a syllabus for each course with extra study materials. The cost is only $50 per year with special pricing for church groups. And you get to choose from the School of Biblical Hermeneutics or the School of Systematic Theology. Sign up today for Striving for Eternity Academy. Details at strivingforeternity.org. Hey, George Alvarado here. Ever wondered why the majority of people who call themselves Christians don't share their faith? Do you know what you would call someone who does not regularly, consistently, and purposefully obey the Great Commission? Would you know what word to use? Apostasy, the greatest omission, answers these questions and more. My book not only coins a new word that Christians can use to describe the sin of not evangelizing, but it diagnoses the reasons why this sin is so rampant in our Western churches. And it provides a thorough, biblical understanding of the root causes so that you and other professing Christians can expose the greatest sin of omission. So whether you or your local church is on fire for the Lord, or you know somebody who is about as on fire as a wet match, this book is for you. Purchase your copy of Apostasy, The Greatest Omission at trackplanet.com and like our Facebook page to get the most recent updates concerning this book. Remember... It's a positive, the greatest omission at trackplanet.com. topic of pornography uh which is so we're we're getting into this so if there's anybody listening that maybe have younger people uh you know younger kids or children in the area and they don't want them to hear anything about this uh, now would be the time to exit um but we're going to get into this topic it's a it's a very um destructive thing that uh really has a hold on a lot of people and, and even in christian uh, community, even even within you know brothers and sisters, well yeah brothers and sisters in Christ um, can have an addiction to this, uh, and so we want to talk about that you know so let's jump right into that brother. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's the the best weapon the enemy has. Uh, it's it's it, it's one of those sins where you know it's not out in the open. It's something where you're gonna go in a dark room all by yourself. And type away, and that's the problem with it. It's hidden, and anything hidden can easily stay hidden unless the Lord brings light to it forcibly or through your heart. You know, with me, I had a huge problem with it because I, 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 I grew up Roman Catholic, so I knew enough about the scriptures to twist it to um, to, to 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 allow. Uh, pornography into my home. To me, it was art. 
you know. So, you know, I was I was downloading spindles of CDs, um, burning DVDs. You know, I had spindles upon spindles upon spindles of downloaded content, and it was it was sickening. You know, and it only took the Lord to break that, uh, break me out of that. You know, and and even still to this day, I still I still struggle. My wife is listening. You know, we talk about this. She understands. You know, but she had every right to leave me. You know, because men don't realize what what pornography not only just does to yourself, what does what it does to your spirit, but what it does to you know your marriage, your wife, your children, your family. You know, it alienates you entirely, and it puts you in a box with a computer, a cell phone, a tablet, where you can just get pure, well, not pure, but satisfaction, and that's what it is. It's satisfaction at the press of the key, and that's the problem with it. You know, and, you know, the problem is, is that we have some of these, you know, quote-unquote churches and pastors saying that it's a... Well, let me ask this first, Rick. Um, would it be okay if I used the long M word? I think I know where you're going with it. That's that's fine. Okay. Um, you know, there are pastors that say masturbation is totally acceptable in you know, in controlled um controlled um controlled um situations as long as you're not looking at this stuff. But even that alone is fueling the sin behind looking at pornography. You know, it's that self-satisfaction, it's that self-gratification. And now in today's society, you can't go anywhere without seeing half-naked women. You know, it's all over the place. You know, whether it's new movies, you know, like Fifty Shades of Grey, saying sadomasochism is acceptable. You know, or, you know, the, the, the half-naked men and women in underwear ads going around Times Square. You know, or... The, the, the pleasure shops, the quote-unquote pleasure shops that you see on the highway with their billboards, it's, it's, it's all over. You can't even turn on Facebook with their ads. I've probably blocked over 350 ads that come up on my Facebook alone, and it just keeps coming. Mm. You know, what? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's disgusting. It's everywhere. I just found out today from my brother that in New York City at the end of the month, they're having... The um, the New York City Film uh, Porn Festival. A festival. Wow. To celebrate this. You know, and he wanted to do it. <clears throat> and I told him, brother, brother, I'm sorry, I can't. You know, I suffered from this. I can't, I can't, I can't consciously put myself back there because I'll fall. I could potentially fall. You yeah. know, and, you know, just going back to, to masturbation, just real quick. You know, funny enough, I was reading through a lot of my old notes, and I actually wrote, wrote this in 2012, right after the Lord um, broke that chain. You know, and I was doing I was doing study on 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 the term and what these pastors were saying, and I realized that it's completely wrong, but in a different sense. See, from from the Random House Dictionary, the word actually means sexual self gratification, but I word it better by saying Selfish gratification sexually on oneself. The reason why I reword it is that because if you look at the meaning of the word sexual, it means the union of male and female. Now, of course, that's just the dictionary term. We know, you know, the Bible is a lot more detailed about that. You know, it's 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 in marriage. It's for the marriage bed. But let's, you know, I'm I'm just sticking to the basic dictionary right now. You know, so safe to say it's a self-centered act. We understand that, but it's, but something it's something hidden where no one can see that just brings pleasure. That's damaging, you know. Um, um, you know, people even say, "Why even talk about?" It? You know, the majority of American Christians are being destroyed by this little thing in dark places. I think the the number now is sixty eight percent of all Christian males in the church. You know, they sit somewhere on the odds of almost 50% of pastors, you know, men brought up to, to lead their flocks of falling in secret. You know, and that's yeah. a problem. You know, and it's not <clears throat> yeah, it, like most... Yeah, go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna agree with you and just say yeah, it is a very big problem. A lot of things is done in secret. Eventually, will come to the light, but it, it's destroying uh, you know men. It's destroying their 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 marriages. Those that are married, it's destroying their uh, the way that they look at women. Even if they're single, it's destroying that because it it, it kills the love. It makes it puts this desire before you. And and actually, I mean, the Bible tells us in James uh, one. 13 through 15, it says, Let no one say that when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot tempt, be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. I mean, yeah. so these are, these are desires that, that uh, are within the heart. And it says, uh, then these desires are uh, conceived, and they give birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. And um, that's what uh, is so destructive because of these desires. We we want to fantasize and live them out, and uh, then it becomes sin because we get involved in it. We give in to those temptations. Um, there's a, a video that I watched a few years back. Of, there was a pastor that I was um, – Kind of, I, I enjoyed some of his stuff, his his discipleship materials, and it was a, a discipleship type material called "Gods at War," and he had a guy on there talking about how he was a believed himself to be a Christian, uh, but then got into the porn industry making porns, like uh, being a producer of of porn, and and okay. then um, he did that for so many years, and then he got out, and now he's a big advocate against that. Um, and then I was just reading an article the other day about this guy saying that he uh, be, has been busted for having sex with minors, you know. And I'm like, see, the, 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 he's giving into those desires. He wasn't fully, you know, like uh, th those desires when they give into these temptations and then they fall. Um, it's destructive, and you can't get rid of that. I mean, I was in the military for nine years. I, I've looked at porn. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. and so those images stay with you. They don't. They don't go away. But the one thing that uh, you was talking about earlier too, and I wanted to mention real quick, um, the the images being everywhere. Um, yes. What we're seeing, you know, women in in under uh, garments and stuff, you know, bras and panties, it's just everywhere. And being a male man, I mean, mm -hmm. I see it on all kinds of ads. You know, I'm casing up my mail with magazines, Men's Health or uh, fitness magazines, or mm -hmm. even Sports Illustrated has a skin issue where the people are on their covers naked. You know, um, it's unbelievable. Uh, i got a question, or i got a caller on the line real quick, and I'll bring them on if they have a question. Um, I believe this is Andrew Rappaport. <laughs> Andrew, hey. is this you? <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I actually, I, Mitch sort of answered part of the question I was going to ask, which is, so would you – because cause I got the same invite for this porn uh, thing in New York City to go do an outreach at it. So my question was going to be, you know, would, do you encourage doing outreaches at events like outside strip clubs, outside like at this porn festival, or, you know, even in <clears throat> as we had in New York City in Central Park where they had body painting day, um, so that, that's, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I, I I don't necessarily agree with them because the whole thing is is that all men struggle with this, whether they can admit it or not. Some stronger than others, you know. But the fact is, you know, when these when these women when these men are, you know, let's take the body painting for example. They're walking around the street, the center of Union Square, naked, topless. You know, you unless you're really good at averting your eyes, you know, it's it's going to be a problem. You know, and then lust could easily just kick in. You know, unless the Lord, you know, does not give you a desire for that, maybe that's not a problem. You know, I I can't judge anybody else. You know, I know we need workers out there giving these people the gospel. You know, because they're lost, they're dead in their sins, just like all of us. You know, I can only see it from my perspective. I think too, with that, um, what comes to mind is the the gay parades. Uh, and gay festivals that, you know, where a lot of times you see people, you know, dressed pretty much very immodestly. I mean, just, you know, wearing practically nothing though at those places as well. And um, I I think, and it's a hard question, but we want to we wanna try to address it, is, you know, I think it may come down to that personal's convictions, you know, yeah. 
But I think we have to be very careful. Like Mitchell said, you got to be careful because it's very easy. Even when you're just out regular on the streets preaching, there's going to be people that are dressed, women that are dressed in ways that you know are, are going to draw men to to lust. I mean, they're going to do it automatically because their hearts are bent that way. But um, you know, we we want to be careful not to to guard our eyes and to guard uh, our hearts from those types of things. And so, definitely, if a person struggles with that. Um, they shouldn't. They shouldn't be going to a place like that. I, I think, in my my personal opinion, I don't think they should, if um, it's something that they struggle with. But like Mitchell said, maybe if the person's a bit uh, stronger in their faith and they're you know they're able to and and are just saturated in prayer um, and saturated in the Word of God to to guard them from that, and they feel led to go out and share the gospel at a place like that, then I mean I'm not going to say they're in sin doing that, but um, we have to be very careful to guard ourselves. Yeah, and see, with me, I have, I have, you know, I have my helpmate. I have my wife. You know, she knows where my weaknesses are, and when I'm invited to certain events, you know, I'm like, hey, there's this event. She'll say, go for it or don't go for it. You know, we we even had a discussion regarding, you know, the the outreach site that I um, um put down for Comic-Con because of my um my background with video games and and comic books, you know. And thankfully, mm-hmm. you know, the Lord has, you know, for the most part, taken taken control when it comes to that, where I can enjoy them on a leisurely, leisurely basis, you know, where um, going out to the Comic-Con, you know, and preaching the gospel is not a problem with me. And plus, I'm able to um, use an apologetic, you know, geared towards those those men, women, and children that nobody else might. Because I have background in what they're what they're trying to um, get pleasure in. Yeah. Well, Andrew, we still have you on the line with us. Is there anything you'd want to add to that? Um, with all your the experience you have in in ministry and, and knowledge of scriptures, to maybe add to this to help those that are listening in dealing with uh, this issue of pornography. Well, w- with the outreach, is one thing I would say is this. Um, I, I found many, many years ago, like uh, 25 years ago, when I was going out on the boardwalks and the beaches, um, especially on the beaches to evangelize, there were women that would specifically try to see if they can get you to lust after them just because you're out there preaching the gospel. And so mm-hmm. for, for some guys who think like, oh, yeah, I could just go out and do this, and it, there's going to be some people that they they're. I mean, we get it. You, you know, uh, Mitchell knows. We he and I go to Union Square. You'll you'll get two women kissing in front of you to try to get a reaction. I just look the other way. Um, one of the things we do on our team is we we have a code word that we use that identifies that there's something you shouldn't be looking at, and then we tell everyone which way to look. So we'll we'll say the code word and then say you know look in a totally different you know if I if I want you to look right. I use the code word and tell you to look right. We don't. We do it that way so that no one knows what we're talking about. They don't know why. We, you know why uh-huh. you're saying this strange word. And, and but we know what it means. Uh, came in real handy when we were down in New Orleans because uh, <laughs> it was kind of hard to walk anywhere without someone going. Don't look. Don't look, yeah. don't look that way. Don't look that way. <laughs> um. So. But you mentioned really New Orleans. Easy. I know. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, New Orleans, I know uh, I was invited to come down. I wasn't able to go. Um, I wasn't financially able to make it down there. But there was something going down there this last week uh, where I was invited to come down and do, like, an outreach to uh, uh, Louisiana down there or to just to New Orleans. And um, I was talking to my friend, one of my ministry partners, Austin Hetzler, and we was talking about it. And he said, man, I don't know if I would go to – to New Orleans, so it kind of fits into our thing, and that was the reason why he said because you're going to have that everywhere, and I'm I, I need to protect my eyes, and um, yeah. yeah, so that that definitely is something that hits home for street preachers, people that are out in these places, you know. Yeah, because there are going to be people that want to try to get you get to see if they can get you to be a, the hypocrite they think you are, um, and and so you're going to get some of that. As far as personal. Uh, I mean, look. I mean, get get some software on your computer sent where you don't have the password to it. Sent, you know, that sends every, you know, website you go to to someone else, your wife or somebody. Um, you know, Mitch said, make sure that your wife knows where your weaknesses are. I mean, my wife knows 
my trigger points. She knows when I'm being tempted, you know, and, and, you know, we can talk about it. Um, I know some people are like, Oh, don't, don't have your wife as your accountability partner. Uh, she's got more of a vested interest in my purity than anybody. <laughs> Amen. All right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, brothers. Well, you know, there is so much there with that. I mean, uh, it's just pornography. It really is destructive. Uh, it really destroys marriages. It destroys that the, what true love is because love love is not based on this feeling like what people think, this emotional thing. And, and a lot of times with sin, with all sin, uh, it's it tempts you for that pleasure, that that temporary pleasure, uh, what makes you feel good for for a season or for for a little while, but it, it doesn't satisfy, it because it's not real love, it's not real, it's it's and then it, it distorts, you know, a lot of times men's view of women, uh, you know, because they see those magazines, they see those those videos, they see those things that make a woman portrayed in a certain way, uh, that they fantasize for that. Uh, but it's not the reality, and um, you know, so they're constantly seeking to find that fantasy, um, and it distorts relationships, and so um, it's very destructive, very, very destructive uh, thing. With you know, pornography. Mitch makes a great point when he talks about video games and pornography. I, I, I didn't, maybe I, he mentioned I didn't hear it, but um, Mitch, you made a connection in Jersey between the pornography and the video games with how they're similar in trying to, to set you up in control in, in yes. playing God. Yes, yes, and and that's a big problem. You know, with the with the video games, you have, you know, the majority, if it's not a Nintendo system, the women are scantily dressed, period. That's just the way it is. If Nintendo has, you know, rules and standards where, you know, women have to be dressed up to the neck. Sony... Xbox, not so much. So you're going to get the scantily clad stuff on there. That's the majority of, quote-unquote, good gaming. Best of the year gaming. It's on those two systems. So not only are you in control of a male character or a female character, depending on the level of your perversion or if you're a male or woman, you know, you are in control. Most of these games now have sexual themes in them that you interact, whether it be, you know, regular heterosexual or homosexual or, you know, alien and human. You know, it, it it goes back and forth. Now, what that does is, now these games are, you know, some of these games are played on the PC. Now you have access to your porn right there. You all tab, close the game, check out a website, go back to the game. And it's a constant cycle yeah. of alt tabbing, you know, just to get the satisfaction. And this is the problem, and this is the danger for wives, girlfriends, because we get it set in us. These things give me pleasure. These things give me satisfaction. So you have to be all that. So get to work. Yeah. You know, and that's the problem. Right. And I know this, the show is going to end real quick, but I want to just add this really fast, Rick, if you don't mind. You know, going yeah, go back to going back to masturbation. It slowly kills your emotion and your empathy to relate to anybody. You know, when somebody, quote, unquote, does the deed, it's not usually sitting in a bathroom alone. It, no, it's actually with, te- with the technology that we have today. You know, just flipping through nighttime television is enough to get our minds going. You know, let's face it. It really doesn't take much to stimulate men. That it, it, it is what it is. That's because we've been um, numbed to the true beauty of the women in our lives, of our wives, you know, of, of those who are courting. You know, we're numb to that beauty, the beauty that God set in the Garden of Eden for us. You know, driving down the highway, just watching commercials, pass on our favorite programs, and anything in between, the media bombards us with bikini ads, underwear, lingerie, car commercials that have 100 bikini-clad women praising the driver of their new, their new model vehicle, you know, which actually takes place in the driver's head. You know, the more we mm-hmm. see of a certain thing, the less we're affected long long term by it. And just become and it just becomes the normal. So now our women don't stimulate us just by being loving or themselves because we see that that daily in the world. 
you know? So we look for something yeah. more humble, with something more vile and rotten things that we can think of. You know, the result? Pornography. Right. Yeah, and, and I want to say, I want to encourage anybody who's listening, <clears throat> excuse me, who, who may be struggling to, to help you understand what progress looks like, because uh, there are many people who might say the types of things like, you know, uh, I, I've got this uh, addiction, and, and that's what it is, is an addiction, um, but they may say, I, I've tried to stop so many times, but I still end up in front of a, a computer screen, or I want to be faithful to my spouse, but uh, uh, other sexual partners or other or other things are so available uh, I know it's wrong, but I just can't seem to stop myself. And some of these things that, that I know I've, uh, people say uh, when they're struggling with certain things, but to know that there's progress, um, I would say get into the Word of God, get an accountability partner, somebody who, like Andrew mentioned, the uh, the thing to guard your computer. Um, you know, Find a good program to do that where it sends it, whatever you're looking at, to an accountability partner, someone. Uh, if, if you are married and your, your accountability partner can be your wife, great, like they said, because that, your wife's got that interest in wanting to keep you uh, in line and, and help you with them temptations. Can Go I ahead. add to that real quick with the wife accountability partner? You know, me yes. and Andrew are blessed beyond belief because we have strong-willed women powerful women of God in our lives. But not every woman is Amen. strong. You know, not every woman is strong. Not every woman can can take, you know, take that reality. You know, you have to come clean and confess your sin to her. You know, but depending on how she reacts, you know, will tell you if, if, if she can be a, uh, an accountability partner for that. You know, but mm-hmm. the goal is you have to bring the darkness to the light. You have to tell your spouse if you're married. You know, because you're 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 sinning against her, period. You're sinning against God first, but you're sinning against your wife because you're destroying the image of God in her. You know, and then you right. have to go to your head pastor and you have to admit that to your head pastor. You know, your pastor needs to be involved. You know, it, 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 mm-hmm. this is a sin that loves darkness and wants to keep you in the darkness, but you have to, have to, have to bring it to the light. I can't stress that enough. It can't be a secret. You know, put your computer And that's in what the main sin room. does. Right, and that's what sin does to you. It, it brings you to that point of embarrassment. It brings you to that point of your, the pride comes out that you don't want to go and tell somebody you have a problem. Uh, and then that yes. embarrassment of going to someone and saying it to, to someone that you're struggling with this. And, and we see that because we see it in a lot of um, sometimes high-profile uh, pastors, high-profile yeah. people in ministry positions uh, that fall because they try to keep this thing in the dark and they're giving in to this desires of their heart um, yeah. rather than uh, getting somebody to go and say, look, I'm struggling here. And I think I think that's another issue that, that – needs to be addressed, I think, in, within the church, um, you know, maybe not tonight, but something that needs to be addressed as far as um, being able to be willing to have those kind of conversations with people, because a lot of times what I've seen uh, is when somebody comes in, in, into church and you ask them, hey, how are you doing? Everybody always says, fine, because instead mm-hmm. of, like, really opening up and saying, look, I'm struggling here, and I think a lot of it has to do with because they're worried about either what the other people are going to think of them or the, the gossip that's going to be spread or um, how they're going to, like, basically how they're going to be viewed by the other people in the church um, rather than the, the, the body just coming alongside and loving them. I mean, you don't have to tell everybody, Amen. but having those brothers or those accountable, accountable partners coming along and just loving on that brother or sister saying, I'm here for you. I understand. I may not struggle with that, but I struggle with this, you know, uh, and, and hey, I'm, I'm here for you. You know, and mm-hmm. I, I think uh, that we need to see a little bit more of that in in our churches today, between brothers and sisters in Christ, just yeah, loving on correct. each other and and being there for them, understanding that we all struggle in areas, we all have different sins where we struggle. You know, and God is sanctifying us and helping us to get uh, by His grace to overcome those things, and we're growing. But um, some people have different different issues, and sometimes we take certain things and we put them up there as if that's the most hideous sin ever, and they're, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, they're ostracized, or <laughs> did I say that word right? They're, they're put yeah, up there yeah. because of the certain sin that they may have, um, while somebody may struggle with lying or struggle with, you know, uh, 
you know, being dishonest on their taxes or whatever it may be. Um, and yeah. so I just think we need to come alongside and, and love on them. But as I know, Amen. I've kept you a little bit longer, but um, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, Andrew, first, I you know, got you on the phone. Uh, anything you'd like to add to this conversation? And then, Mitch, um, anything you'd like to add before we before we close it out? No, I have nothing to add. Mitch, Mitch covered a lot. Well, thanks I for calling in, in Ohio, Andrew. Though. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that, definitely. I'm looking forward and to Jersey. That. You're coming to both, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to that one too. I, I looked at my um, uh, Lord willing, Lord willing. I'm not going to commit completely, um, but Lord willing, I'm off that weekend, and I really do uh, would love to make it up there. I'd love to come out there and uh, uh, and just be at the Jersey Fire with you guys. So, thanks, brother, for for calling in, asking your question, and, and sharing your uh, input as well. All right, guys. Thanks. Good thanks, talk to boss. you. You too. <laughs> Mitchell, last word, brother. Uh yeah, there's just one thing I just need I need to add and um I'll try to be fast. But I posted on Facebook uh, a few months ago. Men, if you're married, it is a sin to lust after your wife. Now, what that means is it's a sin to lust because lust means you don't have. Uh, the Bible tells us very clearly we are to have a desire for our wife. So I pray that you get down on your knees, not only repent, but ask God to open your eyes to the true beauty of the woman that he gave you and bring that darkness out into the light because God gives grace to the humble. Amen. (laughs) No. I wasn't sure if you was done. I was letting you go. I was like, preach it, brother. But um, I'll cut up, but, it, but it's been a while, so. <laughs> right. Well, I, have part two. Well, I, I do have appreciate part you. Two. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a big topic. I mean, there's so much. Um, you know, it's such a a big issue within the church, and so um, you know, I mean, the world's got their their issues with it but when it comes to what we're dealing with within the church here uh, like i said it's a big issue so yeah brother i appreciate you coming on the show tonight talking about this killing be killing sin or it will be killing you killing you right absolutely so thanks again brother for coming on the show tonight i really do appreciate you taking the time and and talking about this issue social media And, and i pray that we as brothers and those that are listening would um, take from this the fact that we need to be more loving and more compassionate with our brothers and sisters on on uh, online through social medias <clears throat> and realize there is another person on the other side of the screen. And Matt. if we're misunderstanding something, let's try to communicate. <clears throat> so thanks, bro. I appreciate it. And I, Thank you, my brother. Now, Real quick, real quick, you are going to the Ohio fire or you're not going? I'm going to all the fires, buddy. <laughs> okay, okay, because earlier you said, and I was looking forward to seeing you, and I'm like, when you said that you wasn't coming because of me, and then you said you wasn't coming because of Andrew. I just wanted to clarify because uh, I'm looking been, forward to I've seeing you I've been hanging out with Andrew Rappaport too much, so you can tell because I never answer a question. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I will definitely, I will definitely be there at all the all the fire events. You know, so yeah. If you have any information, if you want more information, you can check out spreadingthefire.org. You know, we have uh, California coming up in September. We have Jersey coming up in July, and we have Ohio right around the corner in April. So I hope to see everybody there. It's going to be a great time, great fellowship, great teachings. You know, this is the first time I get the chance to meet Matt Slick, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And I have a commercial that you sent me, and I'm going to play that right now. So thanks for coming on the show, brother. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Love you. God bless. Who doesn't love a little Ohio fire? Fire. 
Yeah. Now, that's the Ohio Players Fire. I'm talking about OhioFire.org. Striving for Eternity's Ministries puts on great conferences around the country. April 9th through the 11th, Columbus, Ohio. Not only will the gang from Striving for Eternity be there, but the gang from CARM, you know Matt Slick and the gang from Christian Apologetic Resources Ministries. Sign up for Ohio Fire at OhioFire.org. In the book of Judges, God tells us of a man who is hiding from the Mennonites inside a wine press. He suddenly sees the angel of the Lord appear to him and says, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now this man responded by saying, I'm the least in my father's house. How can I possibly help? But the response he received was that the Lord will be with you. And when it comes to sharing your faith in Christ, we so often act like Gideon and assume we're not capable or gifted with the ability. We use our weaknesses as an excuse. However, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants us to use these weaknesses, for He said He is with us. And the most important thing you could ever do is to declare to another person the eternal life that is available through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Let Hearts for the Lost come to your church for free to encourage you and instruct you in sharing your faith easily, effectively, and biblically the way Jesus did. So get signed up today. CCN does more than just raise up students to evangelize. They really sow into your life and they really show that they care for you, that they love you, and they really want you to grow in the Lord. And that's why I'm just very happy to be a part of this ministry. So my freshman year, I got introduced to CCN on the first day of school. Um, one of the members was handing out gospel tracks. One of the events they had was um, the Christian rap concert, where uh, one of the artists, Stephen the Levite, he was the ma- he was the featured artist. His rhyme went like this: "You can't hide in the darkness. God sees all actions and intents of the heart. Is gonna come to the light, so repent, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might." And um, those words really like penetrated my heart. And uh, so, um, you know, I left that day and uh, I felt I felt that I needed to repent. And, uh, Give my heart to, to the Lord and to trust for my trust in Jesus Christ. It's amazing coming to the first um, fellowship and how they talked about evangelizing and it was like God, you know, God was always speaking to me. And I said, You're gonna go out there and he said, Well, what gifts do you have? So I can rap. They said, you know, all right, you're gonna rap and God just brought the gift and he's been working on it and I've been out there, you know, open up preaching and learning to do that and how to one to one witness. It's been amazing how God's been using me and they've been teaching me, you know, it's just a tool. You know, the gifts are just a tool that you use, not to glorify the gifts, but to use them for the gospel. And I'm excited to see what I what God's gonna do in my life for the next uh, years I can. I was always a Christian and everything, but I never really, really um, evangelized people. I never really told people about the gospel. I never really um, shared my faith in an open way. I've always felt uncomfortable doing so. And when I was, I saw people who were so passionate about God and who were so, um, you know, zealous for Him and stuff. And I was like, wow, I could actually do that. And they're actually around my age. There have been Christians that are just being so convicted and encouraged on sharing the gospel and the whole evangelism because they don't do it at their home church. And uh, many of them come up to us and tell us, like, you know, how is it that you guys have so much passion and you're so bold in what you do? And the fact that they have, like, such a fear to be able to go out and to just preach the gospel. But through coming out to PCN, they have, re- they have been really blessed and they have been able to grow in many areas of their lives. It's just a blessing to be part of this family. All the words you have the most exciting table. Like 50 people over here. Nobody even cared about the other people. They were like, yo, what's going on with the gospel? I'm not ashamed, baby. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Let's go. I'm not ashamed. Because I know I'm so good. 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 Because I know I'm so good.
And I wanted to get back to our segments of Open Air Preaching Spotlight. It's, it's where I, I, we're, we're taking the spotlight and putting it on these open air preachers, people who are out there proclaiming the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, out in the open air, in the public proclamation. And I want to highlight good, biblical, sound open air preachers. Because a lot of times people have this misconception that open air preachers are these uh, Westboro Baptist people that they see on the news, or these Pelagians that are out there yelling and shouting at women, nasty, vulgar things, uh, and shouting at people things, and, and just condemning everybody to hell, uh, and not preaching any any grace. I mean, uh, not giving people true biblical evangelism, true biblical open-air preaching. So I want to highlight people like that. And tonight, I'm going to try to do two of them, uh, time permitting, and I think we'll be able to get through them. But uh, this first one is Don Carnes, and he's an open-air preacher, and so we're going to highlight him tonight uh, in our first part of this. To take what's not yours, the Bible says, is to be a thief. A sinner need to forgive them. To have sex with somebody you're not married, the Bible says adultery. Even thinking sexual thoughts, pornography, thinking of sexual thoughts of someone you're not married to, the Bible sees as sin. Hatred in your heart, being angry at someone without reason, these things are all sin. And God commands men everywhere to repent, to turn from sin and turn towards righteousness. See, God is, is he's angered to wicked every day. God will not tolerate your sin. God has appointed a day which will judge the world in righteousness. And those that die in their sin, those that die loving their sin and continue sin, a day of judgment when God's wrath is poured out upon the sinner and wakes every man in Bristol today. I'll be judged as well myself. But almost eight years ago, I got saved from that power of sin, so God is, is giving me victory over my sin. I don't love my sin anymore. I'm saved by the power of Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus means. He was named Jesus, for He would save men from his sin. He wasn't named Muhammad. He was named Jesus. For he will save him from his sin. His name means Yahweh's salvation. His name means Yahweh's salvation. For he will save him from his sin. And tonight, I, my, tes my testimony is that God saved me. God can save any sinner in the city of Bristol. Through repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven of your sin. You can be set free from the power of sin. But there must be repentance. There must be a heart that's broken for sin. And there must be a crying out to God. Your good deeds, you're praying toward the east, you're being baptized, you're going to church. None of these things can atone for your sin. God spoke to the Moses, the prophet Mo Moses, and made clear without the shedding of blood, there is no atonement for sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no atonement for sin. Sir, did you know that? Hey, sir, who's going to forgive your sin? The Bible says without the shedding of blood, you have no forgiveness of sin, my friend. You better live to, listen up to this message. Come back and hear the good news. See, I'm not here. I'm, no, I'm not your enemy tonight. I'm not here to judge anyone, to call people names. I'm here to speak the good news. That through the blood of Jesus Christ, there is atonement for sin. I'm here to speak the good news that Jesus Christ came to save sinners from sin, and that He died on the cross to atone for the sins of many, and that on the third day God really raised Him from the grave. That He defeated death, that He defeated hell, and now He reigns in victory. I'm here tonight to make make the news known in Bristol that Jesus Christ is God, and there is no king but Christ. And those that repent and believe, you can receive the forgiveness that's only given through Jesus Christ. My friends, if you're trusting in your church words first, if you're trusting in your baptism, if you're trusting in the five pills of Islam, if you're trusting in the Roman Catholic Church, then God commands you to repent from your dead works, to turn from your dead works to church membership, and turn to the living Christ, turn to the living Lord, turn to the one who defeated sin and lived a life without sin. Turn to the one who defeated death and lives eternally. Turn to the one Lord Jesus Christ, for He is the Lord of over all. For the praise of His glory, tonight I proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you die in your sin, you will suffer the wrath of God. But if you turn from your sin and trust in Jesus Christ, you can be reconciled to God. God desires that none would perish, but that all would turn to Him and live. So repent for while you perish. 
Why will you die in your sin? What sin will you cling to till death? What sin will you cling to till God's wrath comes upon you? There's no sin worth eternal destruction. Have you not heard that hell is eternal? Have you not heard that hell is a place where the fires never quench and there's a worm that never dies? Have you not heard that, that, have you not heard that hell is a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth? Friends, go away from that day of judgment and find out you're a sinner and suffer the rape wrath of God. Today, examine your life and see the truth. Use God's word. Pick up and read. Pick up and read God's word. Pick up the ancient reading, the ancient writings that every Muslim is commanded to revere. Pick up the Torah. Pick up your the law of God and see your sin. For this law of God is the schoolmaster that causes us to run to Jesus Christ to be forgiven. This law of God shows men their sin open their eyes and my fear is sin. And the Spirit of God came with sin by Jesus to convince, convince men of their sin, to show men their, their sin in need of a Savior. For his turn from your sin today and trust in Jesus Christ. Hear the good news today. Though you are dead in your sin, though you love your sin, and God is angry to wicked every day, God showed love. Not that we loved him, but that he first loved us. And like I said, that was Don Carnes, uh, open air preacher, and putting the spotlight on him. Um, another open air preacher that I'm gonna put the spotlight on tonight because I've had these clips hanging in the uh, in the clips, uh, whatever you want to call it, in the stash. I've had them there, um, just kind of sitting there and waiting to be played because the last couple of weeks I didn't really uh, get to do that. And so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play that this next one tonight. Some of you may have seen some of his clips on YouTube uh, as Sean the Baptist. This, this is Sean Holes, and he's another open-air preacher, and this is our second open-air preacher spotlight for tonight. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing. So the Word of God is the bread of life. And when Christ was tempted, when Christ was tempted, my friends, by Satan, Satan was trying to misquote scripture, and, and Satan was trying to tempt Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was saying, it's out of God's word that we live. You can have the best meal available. You can have the best meal on the planet. And that is only, friends, going to fill you for just a moment. But it says, by Jesus Christ, it says, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Friends, we have God's Word. Believe it, trust it, live by it, dine on it, feast on it. Be absorbed in it, my friends. May it impact you. May you put it into action. May you surrender to the good news that Jesus Christ proclaimed, saying He is the way. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ proved He is God, my friends, by re returning from the grave. He came back from the dead. Jesus Christ, my friends, is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Today, my friends, you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can be saved. Amen. Amen. So how do you put your trust in Christ? Are you following Him? Are you surrendered to Him? Are you obeying Him? Because the Word of God says, friends, that is how you live. The Word of God says that but of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is how you live. Friends, Jesus Christ offers everlasting life and forgiveness. That you can escape the wrath of God from hell. That you do not have to be uh, on that broad way which leads to destruction, but you can go down the narrow way that leads to life. Amen? So by the word, sir, don't flip me off like that. Come on, I'm sharing good news today. I'm, I'm explaining to these people in Denver that they can be saved. God bless you, sir. That you can be redeemed. That you can be forgiven. That God in His mercy offers grace through blood sacrifice. And so you today, my friends, can be alive in Christ. You can live by His Word. Amen. You can, amen. You can obey His Word because you love it. Friends, trust in Jesus Christ today. Don't just wait for a thanks. God bless you, sir. Don't just wait for a Thanksgiving holiday. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, friends. Don't just wait for, for a Christmas holiday or an Easter holiday. But today, my friends, you can be alive in Christ. And friends, I would ask you today, that if you would, before you eat your meal tomorrow, please take the time to pray and then take that practice, take that praise and do it every day, not just before you eat, but when you wake up in the morning. Praise the Lord, friends. Exalt Him. Pursue Him. 
walk with Him and believe in Him. For Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords. And Jesus Christ is the forgiver. There is no other name, my friends, under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. There is no other truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, friends. Trust in Him today and follow Him. Friends, as I talk to you today, I would hope that some of you are broken over your sin, that some of you have already been, that God has already been revealing Himself to you, maybe through creation, maybe through your conscience, maybe through the Word of God being preached. And so be beyond here today would be a confirmation that you need to surrender to Jesus Christ in repentance and faith, that He is mighty to save you and He is worthy to pray. Friends, forsake your sin and live for Him. Stop walking this life in pursuit of what you can get and what you can have. The lust of the flesh, friends. Stop walking through this life believing that, that you're going to live forever by being a good person. The Bible says we can't be good enough to have forgiveness. God grants us a gift of salvation. God gives it to us, my friends, freely. It's not by how good we are. It's not by the works you've done, my friends. But God offers grace through faith. He says it's not of works. It is the gift of God. It's not of yourself, but any man should boast. Friends, we shouldn't boast of ourselves. We should be boasting in Christ Jesus today. We should be thankful that God would humble himself as a man and take on flesh. That he would come to this earth fully God and fully man and sacrifice himself for our sin. That's a mighty God. And that same God went to the grave after three days. He rose. He came back from the grave to prove that he is God. And He is the only way. And you can follow Him, friends, faithfully because He is worthy. Friends, I would encourage you, in fact, I would beg you today to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't play religious roulette, my friends, with your eternity. Don't pretend like there's lots of means and lots of ways to heaven and to forgiveness. But through Christ alone, amen? Amen. But through Christ alone, you can be saved. That's the good news, my friends. That the name of Jesus Christ is the name that is above all names. That every knee shall bow and that every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord, my friends. So today, my friends, surrender, bow down, rejoice, repent. Go to God and say, is there mercy for me? Is there mercy for me? Go to God and say, please, God, I have sinned against you. I have transgressed your laws. I have lied, stolen Perhaps you've blasphemed his name, but God is mighty to save. And God is merciful through Jesus Christ. See, God is a jealous God, my friends. He will share his glory with none other. God's not going to say, oh, just, just follow your own religion. You're going to get to some type of heaven or paradise. No, God gave us his son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice for our sin. That's the mercy of God. That God so loved the world, friends, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Life eternal, my friends. A life of sin forgiven. A life that escapes God's wrath and torment and torture by His grace, because of His love for you. Keep it in the church. I can't keep it in the church, my friend. I love you too much, and I love God too much for what He's done for me. God saved me, my friends, in my sin. God saved me not because I deserve to be forgiven, in fact, the Bible says that Christ commended us in His love in this, that God commended us to love in this, and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. That's the love of God. Wow, what what a wonderful uh, open-air preaching message that uh, Sean Holes did there. And I love the way that he ended that as that man walked by and said, keep it in the church. And he said, I can't keep it in the church. I love you too much. That's That's the thing. When it comes to open air preaching, you know, when we go out on the streets and we proclaim the gospel, it is because the love of God compels us to reach the lost souls. We believe in the sovereignty of God. I mean, I can't speak for all of them, but I believe in the sovereignty of God. I believe that God saves. I believe that He is the author and the finisher of the faith. I believe that He is the one, and it is only Him who can save. And the Bible tells us that it is the gospel that God uses as the power unto salvation to bring dead men to life. And he uses us as instruments, as tools to be used to proclaim it, to be a part of what the Lord is doing. It's a true blessing. And, and, and 
That is why we go to the streets, we proclaim the gospel, because we want to see lost sinners come to Christ. We want to see souls saved. You know, we may not see it today. We may not see it in 20 years. But it is always effective. You know, I had somebody recently tell me that they don't believe that, they believe one-to-one conversations is great, but open-air preaching is not effective. Listen, every time we proclaim the Word of God, it is effective. God's Word does not return void. Every time it's proclaimed, it's effective. Whether it's used to harden somebody's heart or used to bring somebody to, to be born again, it's effective. If it's planting a seed for now and then later on down the road, the Lord may use it to bring someone else in that person's life to bring them to full salvation. And so it's always effective. Don't think it's not effective. It's effective. And we love you too much to keep it in the church. That's why we go and proclaim the good news. I didn't really plan on getting on that soapbox, but, uh, you know, um, it just needs to be said. Souls need to be saved, and we have the good news. We have the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it needs to go forth. It's his command. Go into all the world and make disciples. And that's what we believe, and we take that seriously. And we truly trust and believe the Word of God. So, um, getting on, or moving on, I'm not going to get into our sermon jam tonight unless maybe we have a little more time at the end of the show, and I might do it. But uh, for right now, I don't plan on it. Um, What I plan on doing is going and talking about these clips that I have downloaded, and I'm going to get into them. This is a man who professes to be a Christian, and he had this, it was like an 11-minute, 12-minute video on uh, YouTube. I broke it down. I had to take some things out and edit because of the cursing, and there was a lot of stuff in it that really was just irrelevant to these five things that he's saying that the Christians forget. And that's basically what it is, five things that Christians forget. You can look it up on YouTube if you like and and see the whole thing in its entirety. Uh, I may post it on the G220 radio page, but like I said, there was some cursing and things in it that I I just wouldn't want to put it out there without anybody having a warning that it's in there. Um, But this was five things Christians forget. And we'll start with his first. I had it broke down into six clips here, and we'll kind of discuss a little bit after. Nowadays, people dread Christians. I've noticed that mostly online, that Christians are one of the most dreaded types of people ever. And I'm really not surprised. And personally, I don't blame the whole lot of you for thinking Christians are absolutely intolerable. Um, Because just of the way that they've been doing things for quite some time now. Little disclaimer, um, I am the perfect Christian. Just kidding. No, I'm not. What you should know is that I am a Christian, and I am by far not the perfect Christian. I sin often, just as every Christian does. So I'm going to bring things to light that I feel is wrong with Christianity and Christians as a general right now. Okay, so we're going to get into what he believes is wrong with Christians as a general right now so here's five things christians have forgot number one judging others god specifically says to not judge other people you know why you shouldn't judge other people because other people don't like being judged by other people we're all humans at the same time we all do things right and we do things wrong and you just because you're a christian are not given some total authority to decide Who's what and and what's right and what's wrong. You can know it in your own mind, in your own heart, and know all those things, sure. But don't go out and, and mean to tell people how they should live their life or what they're doing wrong with themselves or whatever. Because each one of us is entirely 100% flawed. We have huge flaws among every one of us. Yes, we are flawed. We are sinners. And therefore, we're, we're flawed. The Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. Um, so we're all flawed. And that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need Christ, who died on the cross, who lived a perfect life. 
You see, the thing is, many people all the time want to argue this point of judge not, lest you be judged. Uh, it's probably one of the most, uh, the probably the most frequent response that uh, you get when um, you're living out your faith uh, from people. And, and, and this judge not, you know, the Bible says in John seven twenty four to judge righteously, to make righteous judgments. That's a judgment. You know, in in Matthew seven uh, one through six, when Jesus is talking about, he's talking about hypocritical judgment, self righteous people. But he's saying, he, he says to make these righteous judgments. He's saying these people are judging unrighteously. You need to remove that speck from, uh, you know, before you go at the speck from the brother's eye, remove that plank from yours. You need to take it out. You need to to get yourself to making righteous judgments. Um, and that's what it's talking about there. Don't make self-righteous, hypocritical judgments. So this whole thing about you know judging is an argument I don't seem to understand that they don't seem to understand because they're making a judgment by telling you not to judge. Um, and then he says we have no authority. As Christians, we have no authority to, to, to do this. Uh, well, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go make disciples. That's enough authority to go do that. Number two, stuffing religion down people's throats. It's great you believe in God. That's awesome. I believe in God, too. Let's talk about it sometime. But I'm not going to go up to the atheist guy, and I'm not going to sit him down and say, I'm so sorry. You need help. You have a sickness. And the only way to cure it before you die and your body and soul burn in hell for all eternity where you will scream with other atheists just like you forever in the lake of fire as your flesh scorches from your bones. The only way to avoid that is through me telling you about Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to hear that they're going to burn in hell if they don't have the same ideas that you do. That's just a thing people don't like to hear. I would never go up to somebody and say, you're going to die. You're going to die. This isn't friggin' a horror movie, okay? You're not a, like a little seven-year-old from a horror movie that walks out of their bedroom with their hair in their face. You're going to die. And then they wake the kid up. The kid's like, what? I didn't say that. You're not that person, so stop appearing to be that person. You're a Christian. Stop trying to freak people out into believing in God. Everyone knows there's consequences for things in life, and there's consequences for things in death. That's what we believe, according to the way you live your life. Whatever. But it doesn't mean that that has to be the doorway into what we call Christianity for another person. See, again, this man professes to be a Christian. I mean, I don't know a person's heart, but the Bible does say you will know them by their fruit. And and the things that's coming out of his mouth towards Christians, I mean, he seems really hateful towards Christians. Like, and he doesn't seem to really love his friends who are not Christians or the people that he knows that are not Christian because he's not willing to share that with them. He's not willing to tell them about Jesus Christ because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. We will die. The fear of God should – I mean we should fear God to the fact that if we die apart from sin, we will spend eternity in hell. It is not wrong to warn someone of the wrath to come. If you truly believe that if somebody dies, they go to hell, and you don't say nothing to them because you don't want to offend them, or they're really not into religion, or that's not their thing, or they have a different faith, you don't love them. You don't care about their eternal life. And so... It's sad to see that. It's sad to see people say those kind of things. I mean, you talk about don't shove people's religions down their throat. You don't like uh, – well, actually, I didn't get to that part yet. But, um, I mean, as I said in the first part, Matthew 28 says, go make disciples. How are you going to do that? The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so, therefore, we need to go and proclaim it. Like I said, the Bible says we're going to die, and then we're going to face the judgment, Hebrews 9.27. So we need to be right with God, and we need to go and warn people to be right with God. 
And it is a sin of omission if people do not share what they know they should do. That's what omission means. It says it in James. The, the things that you don't do that you know you should is called a sin of omission. It's sin to not share. I mean, it's the good news. You want to tell people that. Uh, let's go to this next clip. Number three, having a religion to begin with. Religions, in my opinion, are good at one thing, starting wars. So I don't like to adhere to any religion. I don't believe God calls me to a religion. I believe God calls me, as a Christian, to a relationship with him. I should be able to talk to God one-on-one, -on -one, like he's in the room with me, and I should be able to say, hey God, you know, I need some help right now, or hey God, I'm feeling down right now, or hey God, thanks for this, or hey God, wow, what a great day. I should be able to do that, which I am able to do that because that's what I do. I don't have to uh, light incense. I don't have to get out gold chalices. I don't have to, you know, swing, you know, from the rafters painted in blood of the sheep. I, you, you are called to a relationship with God. Have a relationship with God. He is, he's right there all the time. I mean, just get to praying. Start talking. Talk out loud. Speak. And he's there. You don't need to have the religion. The religion part, you know, condem it, it, it leads you to condemn other people for their beliefs. Religion is absolute crap. I absolutely hate it. Done with it. I don't want it anymore. I've never wanted religion. I thought religion was one of the most boring things I've ever been a part of in my life. And I'm so happy that I broke free of it. You should really try it because religion just leads you down the path and sets you up so that you can have a lifeless relationship with God, actually a non-existent one. You should have just a, a free-flowing, I can speak to God whenever I want and tell Him what's on my mind and not have to worry about it relationship with God. Don't worry about it. Just talk to Him. If it's on your mind, even if you end up swearing and stuff like that, do it with God there. So, I mean, it's not like God's going to be sitting there, oof, with my virgin ears, ugh. He, It's okay. He understands that swearing is a part of life. He understands that. And when people get frustrated, that's how they relieve stress is by swearing. Now, should you... You see, this, this is something, and I don't know, maybe you may disagree with me, maybe you may agree with me. Uh, but the Bible says in James, you know, 127, it says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. When when people try to separate this, and this is why I'm saying you may disagree with me, but where people try to separate this, and, and I hear people say it often, is like, I don't have a religion, I have a relationship. Okay, I understand what you're trying to say, but it is religion, and, and when we separate that, I think we, we lose the reverence and, and, and that, that reverence and that awe for God. Um, it's not about religious work. It's not about trying to do certain things. He mentioned a lot of different things. You know, it's, it's not about the religious work that many religions incorporate to say you need to do this, you need to do that. No, it's faith, it's faith in Christ. It's, we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and that's it. You know, and, and so it's not about the works that some religions may push on people or anything like that. But to say that it's not a religion, I think I – think, this personally, I think we need to stop doing that um, because of the fact that it separates that and people think, well, I have a relationship. And then we listen to the way the guy is speaking about this relationship. He's like, hey, God, hey, God, hey, God, as if God – I mean not reverencing the God of the universe, the, the ruler and king of kings, the lord of lords, you know, not, not reverencing him, just talking a lot to him like – like he's your buddy. He's God. He's almighty God. When, when, when people stood before God, when we see the, the, the prophets go before God, they fell on their face. When we see John go before God, he falls on his face. You know. And do, do, do we talk to him in prayer? Yes. I, I don't want to get off the soapbox again. I get to go in and, and get to preaching. But, um, yeah. And so uh, we need to be careful there. And then he says about cussing, swearing, you know, and it's okay. God, God has no problem with that. But Ephesians tells us, you know, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I mean, you know. 
don't let any uncorrupting talk come out of your mouth. I mean, I'm thankful that, you know, sometimes when people get angry and they say certain things that God tells us in his word that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness when we confess those things. But to, to just have that flippant attitude to think we can just go to God and cuss and say whatever uh, before a holy God. Um, and again, it goes back to, you know, just taking completely the religion out of it and saying, you know, I don't really reverence God. He's just like my buddy, and that's – I just think that's wrong. Uh, let me see what clip we're on. I don't even remember, but let me play this next one. If it'll play. So while I'm waiting for it to play, it says it's playing, but it, I don't hear anything. Does anybody hear anything? Because I'm not hearing anything. And that is a little frustrating. Sometimes with blog talk radio, sometimes you have some issues. And uh, it looks to me that I'm having some issues uh, tonight. So uh, I don't know what else to do with blog talk. Sometimes I'm going to try to refresh. Hopefully I don't lose anybody. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it's so important to know God and reverence God and, and tell Tell others about this King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the the ruler of all things. You know, he is seated on the throne, and and we need to truly reverence him and truly worship and bow down before uh, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so... um, yeah, I can't get to the the screen. I'm having some issues. I don't even know if you can still hear me because uh, I'm having some some difficulties here with Blog Talk. Um, I lost the chat room. Um, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Sometimes Blog Talk does that. Um, I only got a few more minutes left in the show. I'm going to go ahead and try to get through these clips if they will play for me. Uh, let's see um, what we got here. Number four, you aren't God. So that means to say that you're not perfect. Uh, you're not allowed to make judgments. And you shouldn't be telling who is going to hell and who is going to heaven. You have no right to dictate that. You didn't create the heavens and the earth, blah, 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 blah. So why do you think that you have a right to say what happens in it? Sit back, relax, it's life. You are not here. You are not some superior being sent by God. That was Jesus, by the way, not you. And uh, you have no right to tell anybody that they're going to hell. Honestly, that, that freaks me out. If, if I was to create the world myself, say I created everything, and I know I'm not God, duh, obviously. But you did it. I would be so upset if... I laid out the rules, the groundwork and everything, and said, this is what this is, and blah, 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 blah. And I just had everybody going around reading that and saying, oh, yes, you're going to hell. It says right here, hold on, yeah, you're going to hell. Oh, my God, you're going to hell. No, shut up, sit back, as I said, live life, worry about yourself. You can worry about other people, but worry about them in a constructive way which this video hopefully will bring to light. Don't do the last three things that I said, plus this one. No, it ain't bringing anything to light, my friend. You you have no love for the lost. That's what you have, is no love for those which are lost. You're saying don't tell people about their sin? It's not that we condemn people and say, you're going to hell and I know you're going to hell. We say, look, unless you repent and turn to Jesus Christ, you will spend an eternity in hell. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses 9 through 11, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the Spirit of our God. Um, In Revelations chapter 21, verse 8, it says... 
But as for the cowardly and the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake of fire, or in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So to not warn somebody about that is very unloving. It's very unloving. You look to Ephesians 5, uh, 1 through 21. Uh, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But the the sexual immorality and all impurity and covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among the saints. Let there be no filthiness, no foolish talk, no crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partakers with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Let me turn the page. What? Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible, for anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, awake O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully when how you walk. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Amen. 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 I'm trying to play this last clip, which doesn't seem to be working for me tonight. So maybe it's just not supposed to play. Um, But he was going to talk about uh, we're not really a representative for God. And um, basically what he's saying in this last three-minute clip, which I don't think is going to work. um, And and he basically tells people to be a good person, you know, and good works does not save us. I mean, we need to look at that. There's no one good. Psalms 14.3 says there's none good. There's none righteous. Ecclesiastes 7.20, there is none righteous. There's none. You know, Romans 3.10-12, none is righteous. No one does good. No one seeks after God. You know, no one is good. The Bible tells us in Isaiah that uh, Isaiah 64.6 that um, our good works are like filthy rags unto the Lord. We're not saved by being good. We're not saved by going to church. We're not saved by giving tithe. We're not saved... By doing good deeds, we are saved by Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross, willfully going to that cross and laid down his life. Bible says, he said, no one takes my life from me, I lay it down. And because of that, we can have salvation, we can have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is only through him. He's our Lord and our Savior, and Jesus Christ. The Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent. It's a change of mind. It's a turning from that that sinfulness to Christ. Not perfect. We don't preach perfectionism. Uh, Turning to Jesus Christ and trusting in him. Putting all of it in Jesus Christ. And that's where your faith should be. Until next week, that's G220 Radio. I don't even know if my outro music is going to play. I'll try. But it doesn't look like it. So have a good night. And next week, remember, we're going to have Jasmine Lachey on the show talking about True Beauty, her new single that's out. 
And in the second hour, I'm going to have Beth Morris and Mary Petrino Thompson with me. And in that second hour, they're going to take over the show. Good night. <laughs>